Actually, the conflict of medical opinion between Hoxie and the doctors is a competition between two old medical traditions. In the 1800s, society sanctioned both approaches to healing. Patients had a choice of using either doctors, called allopaths, or natural healers, called empirics or homeopaths. The two groups waged a bitter philosophical debate. The allopathic doctors called their approach heroic medicine. They believed the physician must aggressively drive disease from the body. They based their practice on what they considered scientific theory. The allopaths used three main techniques. They bled the body to drain out the bad humors. They gave huge doses of toxic minerals like mercury and lead to displace the original disease. They also used surgery, but it was a brutal procedure before anesthesia and infection control. Few patients were willing to have surgery. Most patients feared allopathic methods altogether. Satirist of the day remarked that with allopathic treatment, the patient died of the cure. Competing with the doctors were the empiric healers. Contrary to the doctors, they believed in stimulating the body's own defenses to heal itself. Instead of poisonous minerals, they used vegetable products and non-toxic substances in small quantities. They especially favored herbs learned from Native American and old European traditions. The empirics said they based their remedies not on theory, but on observation and experience. Satirists of the day added that with empiric treatment, the patient died of the disease, not the cure. The Hoxie herbs come from the empiric tradition. According to Hoxie, they had a surprising origin on an Illinois horse farm in 1840. As the story goes, John Hoxie was a veterinarian whose prized stallion got cancer. He put it out to pasture to die. But three weeks later, the tumor had stabilized. He observed the horse eating unusual plants, not part of its normal diet. Within a year, the horse was well. So John Hoxie began to experiment on animals with the herbs, and he added other popular home remedies. He claimed success and passed the formulas down through the family who eventually used them on people. So the finances with our both insurance companies, it's no real burden. And compared to what we spent, say, $10,000 in less than two weeks when she first had surgery. They, some of them pay it by the month, some of them can pay it all at one time so they're not bothered with it. They never get a bill. And basically, the people today are geared for a statement every month. This we never do. I don't even have the office crew that would be able to get out monthly statements every month. And don't want to do that. If they have it, they pay you. If they don't have it, why embarrass them? Well, this doctor, he really screamed and hollered at me. And so this doctor quit then said, why are you going down there? They're going to take all your money. And I said, uh-uh, because -uh, you already did. The war of money between Hoxie and the doctors is another old story in medicine. In the 1800s, doctors tried to stop the popular empirics from collecting their fees by denouncing them as quacks. Economic competition from the empiric healers caused the doctors to found the American Medical Association. But the AMA was a small trade association without political clout, and the balance of medical power remained equal until the turn of the century. Then, new medical treatments emerged that were potentially very profitable. Promoting these methods, the AMA joined with strong financial forces to transform medicine into an industry. The fortunes of Carnegie, Morgan, and Rockefeller financed surgery, radiation, and synthetic drugs. They were to become the economic foundations of the new medical economy. Ironically, John D. Rockefeller himself used only an empiric homeopath while investing in allopathic medicine. Surgery became viable with anesthesia and infection control, and doctors advocated expensive radical operations. These in turn produced the need for a large lucrative hospital system. The allopaths also discovered a new toxic mineral, Radium. Radium fever swept medicine. The price of radium rose 1,000% almost overnight. 
another costly technological industry entered the hospital system. A drug industry grew out of the booming patent medicine business. Ironically, many of the new synthetic drugs came from plants and empiric remedies. Drug company ads boosted the revenues of the AMA journal 500% in 10 years. The doctors changed educational standards and licensing regulations to exclude the empirics. Soon, only AMA-approved doctors could legally practice medicine. In a brief 20 years, the AMA came to dominate medical practice. Organized Medicine launched a media campaign to associate the empirics with quacks. The code word for competition was quackery. <laughs>